Hello and welcome to Orion Today. I'm Joe Johnson, joined once again by Marco Iafredi. Welcome back, Marco. Hello, everybody. So last week was May the 4th. Mm -hmm. May the 4th be with you. How did you celebrate? Well, I, uh, I thought about Star Wars. <laughs> <laughs> I'll just say that. But you yeah. know I love the movies, Joe. I'm surprised we even have to work on that day. It should be a national holiday. I uh, celebrated by watching some documentaries about the making of the movies. And I dug up a DVD that I have that has the original uh, pre-special edition theatrical release that I grew up with, that I saw in theaters, where Han shoots first. Yeah. And, uh, the effects are a little on the sloppy side, but that's the movie I grew up with. So. And they weren't afraid to make Han defend himself, yeah. That's right, yeah. yeah. You sent me that on your on <laughs> message there. He's like, this is, so this is how Star Wars is meant to be watched. Exactly, yeah. exactly. It's kind of hard to watch those special editions now, but um, the technology's improved, and George Lucas wanted to embrace it. And yeah, they're his movies. Yeah. Controversial Speaking opinion. of which, uh, the library a number of years ago uh, created an event. Originally, it was Star Wars Day to coincide with uh, May the 4th be with you. And then over the next several years, they tried to celebrate other pop culture phenomenons like Harry Potter and Marvel and stuff. Well, now what they do is they call it Fandom Fest, Orion Fandom Fest, which also happens to fall on free comic book day. And so kids can come in, get some free comics, take part in crafts and activities. Uh, the showcase, I ended up filling up the showcase with some of my props and collectibles, and the kids seemed to really enjoy that. You filled that showcase? That showcase is all my stuff. Wow. Uh, Marvel, Star Wars, Harry Potter, Indiana Jones. Uh, inside the meeting rooms, they had crafts where they were playing with little plastic beads, and then they would, like, melt them to form a Pokemon, and uh, kids were able to uh, make their own masks and... All sorts of fun, uh, create, creative uh, activities for these kids to take part in. So uh, I swung by on Saturday to check that out, and it was a lot of fun. The kids had a blast. And I love seeing the reactions uh, of the kids seeing my stuff in that showcase. And uh, the librarians told me that the kids thought those were prizes that they could win. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, right. no, don't <laughs> give away my stuff. Uh, years ago when I had put stuff in the showcase, uh, the kids thought that uh, they could check it out like a library book. And I'm like, no, get your sticky mitts off my stuff. So, yeah, um, get a job so and pay for it yourself. You know? <laughs> Build your own that's collection. Right. <laughs> get a job. Uh, so that was fun. So that not only tied into Star Wars, but uh, Marvel and comics and mm. movies and all sorts of stuff. And you know, that's right up my alley. Yeah, but Star Wars always remains on the top shelf. That's that's my first love. Yeah. yeah. Uh, another thing that took place over the weekend, we have Mother's Day coming up this Sunday. I hope you have plans to treat mom right uh, this weekend. Uh, Orion Township Parks and Rec hosted a Mother's Day marketplace right here at the Orient Center where we do this show. And uh, while I was there, it looked like some pretty good foot traffic. As a matter of fact, they had vendors uh, on two levels, uh, the up, upstairs and downstairs, including the Orient room and some of the uh, activity rooms at the lower level of the Orient Center. And the requirement of these vendors is to uh, bring in crafts that are Michigan made. Nothing could be uh, store bought or uh, you know wide release. It was all locally Michigan made for local vendors. Um, it used to be called Made in the Mitten was the name of the show, uh, but they decided to try and uh, schedule it close to Mother's Day and. Give families an opportunity to buy something for mom. As a matter of fact, there's our audio person right there, Dorinda. Uh, she had this cool antique uh, thingamadoodle. I don't even know what it is. Uh, but she made these little uh, these uh, crafts and, and sold them at the show. And uh, like I said, while I was there, it was a pretty good turnout. And uh, that was a lot of fun. Really colorful event there at the Orient Center. Yeah, craft shows and shops like that, that's the way to celebrate Mother's Day right there. That's right. Something, uh, something homemade for mom, yeah. Um, another thing that happened recently is uh, the Home, uh, Home Depot here in Lake Orion, they have a sort of a nonprofit wing uh, called the Home Depot Foundation. And they go out into the community and work on various projects and 
people submit ideas to them for maybe a veteran who needs a ramp installed or uh, they did some work at the, the old fire department and the gazebo in Children's Park. Well, uh, a week or so ago, they were out uh, building raised garden beds at Friendship Park. Now, Friendship Park already had garden beds, but they were low to the ground, and some people found it difficult to get on their knees and work on the ground like seniors or people with special needs. So the, the team returned to uh, Friendship Park and they built these raised garden beds that sit about four or five feet off the ground so people don't have to get down on their knees to work on them. So Team Depot, they provide all the lumber and soil and materials and drainage and all that stuff. I think they built like six additional garden beds and that brings the total, gosh, I think it's like 36 or something different garden beds. So the way that works is you can contact Orient Township Parks and Rec and rent a garden bed. So like, let's say you live in an apartment or a condo and you want to have some fresh vegetables or something, you can rent one of those garden beds and do the planning yourself and take care of it yourself and reap the rewards and make yourself a salad at the end of the day. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's just kind of a really neat idea to make these uh, garden beds available to the public uh, for people don't, that don't have the property to, to build a, a garden on your own uh, property. So um, now they also built a garden bed, a raised garden bed at the Orion Veterans Memorial. Uh, they call it a victory garden and uh, their team is going to be in there probably within the next week or so and uh, they're going to plant and get that going. Uh, they told me about mid-May and so when that grows and uh, starts producing vegetables. They'll have teams that harvest those vegetables and deliver them to seniors and veterans and things like that. So That's great. Um, so Team Depot's doing some really great things in the community and uh, you can always reach out to Home Depot here in Lake Orion if you have an idea for a project uh, for them to work on. They're always looking for new ideas. It's pretty special. Yeah, and we've been following Home Depot for quite a bit now. Mm -hmm. And that, that interview with Alana Hart that we did for the food drive, you know, she had a lot to say. You know, could could they reach out to Alana Hart if they won't have any ideas? Yes, yeah. I don't have that number handy, but call call the uh, Home Depot in Lake Orion on M24 there and ask for Alana Hart. Ring, ask for Alana she Hart. that up. So, yeah. Um, so they've been doing really great things in the community for a number of years. I've been covering them for years and years and years. So make sure you reach out to them if you have any ideas for projects. So, um, And uh, we recently had a, a pretty big announcement here in the community. Um, w police Chief Harold Rossman, who's only been in the position for a few years when uh, the former police chief, uh, Jerry Nars, retired, uh, he announced his retirement. And so uh, they, they revealed on Facebook, the police department did, that they were gonna have a retirement party uh, at 313 Pizza in downtown Lake Orion. Good choice. Uh, so I headed down there to see what was going on and it was packed to capacity and a lot of people showed up to uh, give thanks and share their love with outgoing Police Chief Harold Rossman. Uh, let's take a look at this clip. On the evening of Thursday, April 27th, friends, family, and colleagues gathered at 313 Pizza Bar in downtown Lake Orion to celebrate the career of outgoing police chief Harold Rossman. Rossman began his career with the police department in 1987 as a reserve officer. He attended the police academy in 1992 and went full-time in 1995. He was promoted to the rank of lieutenant in 2001 then stepped in as police chief when former chief Jerry Narsh retired. Rossman is a Lake Orion native and has seen the community develop and grow. I was born and raised here. Uh, matter of fact, my parents, uh, when I was born, grew, I had a house on Silver Bell Road at Guineas, and across the street was an airport, believe it or not, where the GM plant is. Um, then we, uh, when I was two, uh, they moved over to Pine Tree, and that's where I was uh, raised. Um, I went to Orion schools, went to Weber Elementary, and went to Pine Tree Elementary, and went to Junior High West, which is now the Walden Middle School. And then I went to where the Cirque building is. That was our high school, and, I, and graduated in 1982. I'll tell you what, I, he was my partner for 19 years, right? So 
we work together as a team and when you do that you get to know someone really well and the one thing I knew when I left in 2019 and he picked up that baton is that this village this community this police department was in the right hands um, Chief Harold Rossman defined ethics he defined honesty um, those are the things behind a badge that you want in this day and age right and that's the man that he is and that's the policing that he made sure was throughout this village and throughout the department. So, um, but like anything, every I've, I've heard this from a lot of people uh, in this business that you'll know when it's time. And uh, he called me a couple of months ago and uh, it, the, the, the call kind of was that way. I answered the phone and it was a kind of a pause and then a sigh. And he said, it's time. I've got to go. It's time. I know it's time to go. So I respect that. Um, as a village, uh, we're going to miss him. Um, the beautiful thing is the department has his fingerprints all over it. Um, he's brought those ethics, those talents, uh, that care and concern, uh, and woven that into the mind and heart of every officer uh, that worked for him. So um, it's, uh, we're in a good spot and, and because of his service. 36 years. Rossman's last day is Monday, May 1st, and after that, Lieutenant Todd Stanfield will step in as interim police chief. He talked about how visible police chief Rossman was in the community. He was at everything, kids and cops, and, you know, the parades, walking around, making sure everything was safe and everything's squared away. So everybody's, all the officers knew where they should be. You know, the citizens love him, you know. He walks in, sometimes he walks on the stair, the store, the streets here, he walks right to the store and just says hi. You know, and they're like, Wow, that's the chief coming in here to say hi. Or he does traffic stops. You know, some days, you know, he's got a few extra hours on his hands. It's free. He'll go run radar, you know, or do some traffic stops. And they're like, people are just shocked that the chief of police pulled me over. <laughs> you know? <laughs> so it's just good to be out there to be seen. This way you know what your community wants and needs. You know, because you're seeing it firsthand, not from behind the desk. Any final words to the people like just that, um, uh, again, I'm proud to be able to serve you. Um, I love all the residents here, the business people, and I thank everyone from Village Council to former Chief Jerry Narsh to the citizens um, that have backed me through the years, supported me through the years. Um, I am never going to forget my hometown of Lake Orion. Um, again, I love everybody here. and. God bless everybody. It's again, you you, you made my dream come true. Um, when I was a little kid, I wanted to be a police officer, and you know what? I was a police officer, and then made it to lieutenant, and then to chief. And I never thought that would ever happen. I just wanted to be just a cop. <laughs> and uh, but no, I thank everybody for their support, their love. As I said earlier, Lieutenant Todd Stanfield will act as interim chief until Village Council makes a decision on a permanent replacement. Until then, we here at ONTV want to wish the outgoing police chief the best of luck in his future endeavors. In downtown Lake Orion, this is Joe Johnson reporting for ONTV News. So we'd like to congratulate Chief Rossman on his uh, future endeavors. It was really great working with him. He was always there for us. We saw him in the community numerous times, whether he was uh, doing the kids and cops thing or uh, shop with a hero, you name it, he was out in the community. Um, and uh, in the meantime, until Village Council uh, selects a new police chief, uh, Lieutenant Todd Stanfield's going to step in and do the job. And I asked him if he was interested in doing it full time and he said oh yes <laughs> so uh, we'll see if Lieutenant Todd Stanfield is our new uh, Lake Orion police chief but in the meantime we'd like to wish uh, outgoing Chief Rossman the best of luck. Uh, joining Absolutely. us now is Chuck Haskin from VFW Post 334 and uh, you guys are doing all kinds of good things in the community. Absolutely. Um, just recently uh, I got an email from you uh, saying, are you going to come out and cover our check presentation? And I said, wait a second, we did a check presentation back in February. And you said, this is a different check presentation. So from what I understand, uh, the Oxford Orion Fish Food Pantry reached out to you once again. Can you share that story? Well, they have a situation going on right now that the demand on your organization is so great 
that they need additional resources to come in there. So they wanted to know if we could sponsor another shelf. Mm -hmm. So we approached our post and decided we had enough funds out there to go out and do that again. And uh, so that's why we invited you out. And we wanted to make sure that everybody's aware of what's going on at Fish because they feed in so many people. Yeah. They're, they're talking about going to a second shift because the amount of people going through there has greatly increased. Federal government started during the COVID years to start all these federal food programs. As of May 1st, or April 1st, I think it was April 1st, all that went away. Yeah. So the, the public that uh, was being supported by that, now is does not have no support. Hmm. And now they're coming to fish. And, and that's cleaning the shelves off. I mean, clean, even right. though they do have a surplus in their back room there, uh, they're going through it pretty very, very fast. Yeah. So the check that you presented as part of the adopt a shelf program, uh, the VFW has already okay. adopted the pasta shelf. Now it's the Campbell's uh, chunky, chunky soup. soup. And from what they say, that's the one of their most popular ones used. So they want to make sure they keep that full because one can of that with some rice become a whole meal for the family. Yeah. So we decided, great idea, and we did do that. So if anybody else out there would like to join, that's $1,200 a year, or if you want to go in there by month, you can actually go out and maintain a shelf. A lot yeah. of people do that. But they need help, and uh, they got a big event coming up here, which gives uh, a lot of volunteer work uh, availability on, uh, on May 13th. I believe. This uh, Saturday? This, this coming Saturday. Mm -hmm. And uh, everybody in the uh, Oxford Orient area should have gotten a mail this uh, yesterday, I believe, a little postcard from the post office saying they're just starting their food drive. Mm -hmm. Their national program is called St Stamp Out St Hunger. Stop Stamp Out Hunger. Mm -hmm. And uh, nationally, this is goes on. But for our little world, part of the world, we have the local guys, they got a little plastic bag they put with their postcard, put it out there, and this Saturday, the post office will come pick it up. Well, they pick it up, they take it over to fish to drop it off. We need volunteers out there to help pick up that food and bring it back and put it on the shelves. So Yeah, it's a great it's program. They weren't able to do it uh, several years in a row because <laughs> of COVID, so you can imagine the impact that that had on the, the fish food pantry. It came yeah. back last year, and it's returning this year. Uh, so basically, just fill up a you know a little grocery bag uh, with canned items. Make sure they're not expired or anything like that. Yeah. Leave them by your uh, your mailbox. Put them out maybe Friday night, because as they go out to, to deliver mail and collect mail, uh, if they see a bag by your mailbox on Saturday, they'll collect right. it, right. take it back to the post office, where representatives of Fish will show up with pickup trucks and collect uh, all the oh, stuff that comes into the post office yeah. and get it to the food pantry. So hopefully this drought that the food pantry is going through right now will be taken care of at right. least for uh, another several months because of this. They bring in a lot of food right. during this stamp well, This is the drought. biggest event they have during the year. Yeah. And uh, we just went through our biggest event of the year of doing the Buddy Poppies this past two weekends. Yeah, how'd that which, go? Which you know, it came up pretty good. The weather didn't cooperate with us mm. too well. It would, uh, we had a couple of rain out days that hurt us when, when we were outside. But uh, for the guys that are indoors, yeah, we did pretty good. Yeah. And uh, through all these donations from the community is how we can do out, donate the money to fish and the other activities we do around the town. So we want to thank the community for supporting us the last two weekends. And uh, but uh, continue going with what, what we're doing. Yeah. So we. Uh, we really look forward to doing all the programs. We do it in the Oxford Orient area. And um, we get to be uh, community lives at Sam's Club for both weekends. And so we see you around everywhere. Yeah, that's what we're out here for, <laughs> to see us, because uh, we appreciate what they do for us, but we want to make sure, uh, what the biggest one I can know we did for Lake Orient was that baseball park that we created here on oh, Freedom yeah. Park. Yeah, yeah, yeah the Miracle we, Field. Yeah. yeah, the Miracle Field, that was fantastic. And, yeah. uh, but in the, during the school years, beginning of the school years, you know, we'd give them the money for the bags for the kids, buy coats for the kids, boots for the kids, and uh, do whatever we can to keep the community best as we can here in Oxford and Lake Orion. Yeah, well, that's great. Yeah, as, as an outsider to Lake Orion, you know, just getting used to it, it, it seems like it's really good what you guys are doing, you know, um, getting used to it, getting used to the community, seeing stuff around happening, 
mm. you know, with a video camera or just my eyes, really. <laughs> you know, it's, uh, it's nice to see. Well, thank you. Yeah. But no. uh, we couldn't do any of this without the support of the community. So. Well, speaking of support from the community, if you want to express your gratitude, not only to our living veterans, but those who have fought and died for our country, uh, our Orion Veterans Memorial is going to be bustling in a couple of weeks for mm -hmm. Memorial Day. Uh, things kick off that morning with Orion Township's uh, Orion Veterans Memorial 5K run that kicks off near Children's Park over where the Orion Arts Center is. Yep. And uh, that's a fundraiser that helps maintain the Orion Veterans Memorial and uh, the upkeep. Yep. Bob Watchos does a great job Absolutely. maintaining that park over there. And then there are a number of uh, ceremonies that are going to be taking place that morning. You want to talk about some of the different activities that are going to be happening that morning? Right. The, uh, you know, first is going to be the kickoff, which is going to be the 5K run or walk mm -hmm. and the 5 mile run for those that uh, 5K is not long enough for them. Yeah, there's two starts. Yeah. And I remember the first right. time I was confused by that. They had one start and I got it, and then they lined up for another start. I'm like, what's yep. going on here? Yep. So it's a five mile run, run. walk and a 5K run. run. Were you running, Joe? Different paths. <laughs> no. no. <laughs> Just running around with that camera in my hand yeah. keeps me uh, well, I'm, a w I'm a watcher too, so. <laughs> yeah. But we, what we do do, we do hand out flags to all the kids that are going out for that day. So about 200 flags we give out now. And everyone who right. takes part in the, in the run will get a, a nice little commemorative medal at the end of the run. And you can see it's it's good for people of all ages. You got kids and adults and everything in between. Uh, sometimes there, there's a few uh, veterans in there who uh, run with backpacks, backpacks. on and yep. stuff like that. So uh, it's it's pretty great. It's a really great event. Our younger generation veterans will do that. Yes. Mm -hmm. You won't too, see too many older ones. And then in addition mm -hmm. to the five k, um, there's a number of ceremonies that are going on. Unfortunately, right at the exact same time of the 5K, uh, there's a ceremony going on over at East Lawn, I believe it is. Is that the, is that the cemetery that's on Orion Road? Yes. Yeah. Um, there's going to be a little ceremony there. There's a, there's a monument there. I think a World War II Two. monument yeah. is over at East Lawn on Orion Road. Uh, then at the completion of the 5K run, there's uh, a little ceremony that they right. have in Children's Park where they drop the wreath into the water to uh, honor those sure. lost at sea. Usually that's right around 10 o'clock in the mm -hmm. morning that they do that. And uh, then that kind of concludes all the activities we're doing there. And mm -hmm. we move over then to the, the Orion Veterans Memorial where we have Well, before program. that, before yeah. we get to the memorial, there's the parade. Oh, that's so, right, that's right, the uh, After the ceremony, yep. you'll get a little yep. bit of a break uh, but then you head over to uh, Flint and Broadway, and like most parades that go through the village, they'll kick off, I believe, at Blansom's Elementary School. Blansom. Uh, they work their way down uh, Flint Street, and it's usually led by the uh, police department's vintage 1940 Ford, and um, it's, uh, it's a fun little parade. They usually uh, will stop at the intersection and recognize the uh, honored veteran Mm -hmm. uh, every year they pick an honored uh, veteran to be recognized. This is last year's parade. Um, and so that's really nice. There you see Chief Rossman uh, recognizing right. the honored veteran. And uh, so that's part of the uh, events that are going on that day. Uh, of course, the uh, high school marching band takes part in it. There's some military vehicles and things like that. So, right. um, so like I said, there's a whole bunch of stuff. Uh, that'll be going on uh, in downtown Lake Orion. And then it culminates with the big ceremony Sweet. at the memorial. Right, and uh, this is what the uh, parade concludes uh, right around 12, 12.30, and then we come on over to the, the memorial. The program there starts about one o'clock. Um, you're gonna see our auxiliary from our VFW. They'll be out there doing their buddy poppies. And uh, but the overall program will kick off with uh, Captain uh, Mass Mateo from the U.S. Army in Korea War. He'll kick it off. And after the captain, we turn around VFW Post 334. We'll march in and post the all the colors of the military flags. So we do that. And once we get the flags posted, we'll turn around and have Joanne uh, give us Pledge of Allegiance. Leads the whole group. 
do that. And so we do a nice one. And after we do that, we have them come up and post the reefs out there. And uh, I do speakers. want to see uh, if we have a number of speakers. In fact, one on the screen right now was the uh, main speaker this, this year, uh, Cynthia Wright. She is a lieutenant colonel from the U.S. Air Force, served diff two different presidents. She served on their staff mm -hmm. and uh, has a wonderful career. And she'll be giving the, the main address up there for what M Memorial Day is about. Yeah. And uh, so many people do not know what Memorial Day is about. Yeah, it's more than, family. you know, boating and, and picnics and right. barbecues. It's uh, having the day off of work. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, in that clip that you just saw, they, they read off the names of Lake Orion natives who lost their lives right. uh, at war. So uh, yeah, the, the, remember them. Yeah, in the center mm -hmm. part of the Orion Memorial, um, you got a, a statue of a family uh, hugging together. The names of all the fallen from Lake Orion are around that and they'll have different people stand up there at the stage and read off each one of those names because we never forget those who have gone before us. Mm -hmm. So and that's what Memorial Day is about, remember those who died in the line of battle in wars for we can enjoy the freedoms today. And uh, so we, we recognize those. And it's not trying to remember veterans that are t overall are still alive today. See, that's Veterans Day in November. Exactly. Uh, what Memorial Day is dedicated is to remember that you're fallen, and uh, we do that as best as we can. So yeah. we remember all that. So after we read all the names and we go through that, um, Chris Barnett will be making a uh, little speech, What Makes America Great. And uh, then we'll go out and uh, basically conclude the program. It's about 45 minutes long. But uh, overall, it's uh, very, very well attended by everyone. Yeah. Uh, usually we have standing room only. Um, one caveat is hopefully we have nice weather. Yeah. Yeah. Because we have some years that pouring down rain, <laughs> and we have other years with blazing hot sun, and uh, where we actually had a couple of people pass out because it gets so warm because the whole memorial is laid out in bricks of mm -hmm. fallen people of, of different families, either veterans or uh, um, family of veterans, we'll go with that. But the, uh, you had mentioned that we've got a new, that was, you mentioned the uh, Victory Garden earlier, mm -hmm. but uh, it's a brand new one this year. It's the first one of this, because our old one had been there about 10 years or so. And it was made of wood, and I heard it, it was, was starting It was rotting out, yeah, yeah, it was yeah. rotting out. And it was very tight over there when we put it in. So that's totally went to taken out and a brand new brick victory gardens put in. And also and behind the uh, sign for the memorial, we got some artists came in and did some nice paintings on the back of that. Yeah, and, uh, and they added a few new things recently. The flagpoles are new if you get down there and check right. those out. There's some beautiful signage that honor Rosie the Riveter, Rosie the the River, women who the women uh, served in, yeah. in, the, in the service. So they're yeah. both right next to the Victory Garden. And yeah. really uh, complement the whole Orion Veterans Memorial. Yeah. Because we got so many uh, um, kudos for the dog memorial we put in there a couple years oh, ago. Oh, yeah, that was great. And we, we got people from all over the state of Michigan come out and see the dog memorial. <laughs> but they miss some of the stuff we have on the other side of the. Uh, Orient Memorial with the Victory Garden and the other memorials they get there because we got a lot of our, our veterans uh, got their special places there too. Yeah, you know I, I came out to this community uh, actually this year is my 30th year that I've been here in the Lake Orion community. Congratulations. And yeah. early on within the first year or so is when they broke ground oh, yep. on the Veterans Memorial and so over the last 30 years I've watched them build that memorial piece by piece. That wasn't all put in in one one moment, no. it has been assembled piece by piece with the statue and the monuments and everything getting uh, added over time. And uh, the latest additions are the flagpoles and the and the raised flower bed and that sort of stuff. So, uh, if you haven't been down there, uh, get down there over Memorial Day weekend. Check it out. There's a ceremony going on, and occasionally throughout the year, like in the summertime, they'll have coffee with a veteran. You can go down and, 
and meet some of your veterans and, and uh, honor them and thank them for their service to this country. And yeah. thank you for being here and thank, thank, you, thank you for your service thank and you everything that you, you do here in the community. Appreciate that. And I'm glad we can help you get the word out and uh, we'll, we'll keep uh, following your, your, uh, your efforts uh, we, here in this we community. We hope to see you down here on May 20th. I will yeah, be down there. Yeah, I never Monday, yeah. Monday uh, May 29th. All right. One we'll o'clock. Memorial Day. All right. All right. Uh, now we're going to throw it over. Uh, in addition to everything that was going on this past weekend was Cinco de Mayo. And uh, on Cinco de Mayo, we had a fun little uh, event here in the Orient Center where there was a group of people who were learning to play the ukulele. They were taking classes. And so they had a little recital uh, at the Orient Center. And uh, we had our cameras there to record that. So here's a clip from their performance. That was fun, and we spotted our good buddy George Sinnott among the group playing the ukulele. That's something I've always thought about. It seems like the ukulele would be an easy uh, entry-level instrument. Do you do you play any instruments? You know, I consider the harmonica, but yeah. uh, on beginner-level instruments, you know, the ukulele and the banjo <laughs> seem like they would be pretty good. <laughs> yeah. One of these days, I'm gonna follow through mm -hmm. on that. Joe's going to do a show right for us with a ukulele. Oh, I'll do my own <laughs> little recital, definitely. Yeah. yeah, I used to do karaoke here in the studio. But um, Next up, uh, of course, the beautiful weather is back. Uh, sports are uh, in full swing over at the high school. So here's Joey Tysek uh, with this uh, week's sports roundup. 
Hello and welcome back to Lake Orion Sports Update. I'm your host, Joey Tysick, and today we're looking at spring sports as they are getting closer and closer to the playoffs. We're going to take a look at soccer and lacrosse with a few notes about softball, track, and girls lacrosse. On the last episode, the varsity boys lacrosse team was approaching a battle for first place in the OAA. On April 24th, the Clarkson Wolves came to Lake Orion for a matchup of the top two teams in the red. Both teams came in undefeated and knew this was a huge game. Throughout the game, it was very much back and forth. The Wolves had the lead most of the game as well, but Lake Orion fought back, and late in the fourth quarter, the Wolves secured the win with a couple of late goals to win the game 10-14, giving Lake Orion their first loss on the season. On April 28th, Lake Orion would be home once again as Heartland, another one of the top teams in the state, would also come to LOHS. Unfortunately for the Dragons, Heartland just had their number and Lake Orion's offense was stymied to just two goals where they would fall once again 2-13. After the two losses, Lake Orion would be able to bounce back with a nice easy win over Romeo 15-2. Then on May 2nd, Macomb, Dakota would come to town and once again Lake Orion was looking to get back to their winning ways. Lake Orion came out of the gate hot and was able to put in four goals in the first quarter. Dakota also got on the board, leaving the Dragons with a three-goal lead. In the second quarter, the Dragons would put in five goals, but after they scored a few in a row, Dakota came back and scored two of their own as they trailed Lake Orion by six going into the half. It was more of the same in the second half and Lake Orion's defense stepped up a bit. Lake Orion's offense would also slow down just a little bit as the game just got out of reach and Lake Orion would end up winning the game 14 to five. Lake Orion would then win two more games to round out the past week as they beat Ann Arbor Skyline 11 to two and Gross Point South 13-7. The Dragons record now sits at 11-2 as they sit behind Clarkson's 12-1 record of the season. Lake Orion is back on the win streak and have some tough games to round out their season. We will keep you updated as they look towards the playoffs on the next episode. The girls varsity soccer team continues to push for a very strong season. They left off on April 25th against Royal Oak at Lake Orion High School. Lake Orion got on the board right away as just six minutes into the game, they would score their first goal. Then Lake Orion scored once again with 15 minutes left in the first half, taking a two to zero lead. As we have seen throughout the season, the Dragons pride themselves on their defense and are good at keeping control of the ball. However, Royal Oak did get on the board with two minutes left in the half, and the second half was a huge defensive battle as no one scored until seven minutes left in the game. The Dragons scored their third goal, and that goal basically sealed the deal in the game as Lake Orion could rely on their defensive prowess to win the game 3-1. Then, two days later on April 27th, Lake Orion finally got their offense going as they were able to knock off North Farmington 8-0. On April 29th, Lake Orion got a bit of a breather as they attended the Falcon Friendlies, which was a set of exhibition matches that they participated in. They played Romeo, Midland Dow, and Warren Regina. They tied against Romeo and Dow while they would beat Regina 1-0. On May 2nd, Lake Orion would return home for a match against Troy Athens. This was a tough, tough battle as both teams had good ball control throughout, keeping both teams limited on scoring opportunities. Part of the struggle of the evening was weather as it sprinkled for a bit, poured some rain, snowed, and then the sun came out, but just for a bit. So the Dragons were not only battling the other team, but the elements as well. Athens was able to secure a goal with 20 minutes left in the first half, and that would be the deciding goal, as that was the only goal of the game. Lake Orion once again showed they can compete and always have a chance, even if their offense is struggling. To round out the week, the Dragons would go on the road to play Berkeley, where they would tie 1-1, one -one, and the following day come back home to play Romeo, where they would win 2-1. The girls' record now sits at 8-3-2 on the season. They have four games left in the regular season, and one of them is at Clarkston, so that will be a good test as they head towards districts. In the next episode, we will give a few updates on the varsity softball team as they are currently sitting undefeated on the year, with some big games coming up as some of them were rescheduled or moved because of weather. But with Stony Creek, North Farmington, Rochester Adams, and Clarkston on the horizon, they could be looking at a very special season. We also will have footage from the girls lacrosse team as well, as they are also having a superb season, as their record sits at 9-2 on the year and look for an OAA title. Plus, we will make sure to check in on the track teams, as recently the boys team has beaten Clarkson at their dual meet 
and then would win the Oxford Invitational as well. In the coming weeks, Lycorian will face Rochester in a dual meet, and then on May 12th will be the OAA Championships, with regionals being held on May 19th at Milford. Stay tuned for updates on those coming meets. For past episodes of the Sports Update, head on over to orionontv.org and click the ONTV On Demand link. There you will find all of ONTV's community programming, news, sports, concerts, and government meetings. You can also watch us on Roku, Amazon Fire, and Apple TV, all in HD. Just add the Cablecast channel to your lineup to enjoy local programming at its best. For even more Lake Orion sports, check out our YouTube channel for our full game coverage. Visit YouTube.com and search for Orion Neighborhood Television, and also make sure to catch all of our replays Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Sundays at 7 p.m., along with Saturdays at 1 p.m. We'll see you next time. So lots of good things happening over at the high school and uh, Joey Tysick and uh, the Lake Orion High School video production st uh, students are always covering all the sports events over there and doing a really fantastic job at it and uh, that program over there at the high school is just award winning and uh, they're doing some great stuff and um, and Joey is their leader. He, mm -hmm. uh, he shows them the ropes which is really great. Uh, speaking of showing people the ropes, uh, we have a really great program coming up in a couple of weeks here at ON TV. Uh, we started a thing um, not quite 10 years ago, I think, um, called the Kids Video Camp. And what we do is we open it up to students that are transitioning from fifth grade to sixth grade. And the week that school lets out, uh, they come here to ON TV and spend a week here in the studio. And I show them how to operate our studio cameras, our portable cameras, our editing, all that stuff. And it's really great to see their eyes just light up when they see what we can do. Mm -hmm. You know, behind this curtain, we have a green screen. I show them how the green screen works. Uh, we, show, we watch videos and movie clips and talk about what goes into making movies. And so it's kind of like a boot camp, a week long boot camp where these kids will never watch TV the same way again or watch movies uh, once they know how these things are done. Like one of my favorite things that I do with them is we have some green fabric and I go, have you ever seen the movie Harry Potter where he has his cloak of invisibility? Mm -hmm. I said, we can do that right here in this studio. So we pull out some green fabric, we'll put a kid in front of the green wall and I have them pull the green fabric over their head and boom, they vanish, they wow. disappear and the kids can't believe it. <laughs> and it's really cool when I see that aha moment where they realize, hey, I can do this. And so that's gonna be coming up in a few weeks. It's called our Kids Video Camp. Uh, well, Joe, what is it, June something? It's, no, I, I'm not sure when that is, but, uh, but I, I, what I was gonna say is uh, when I was an intern here, you know, you were really good at capturing the imagination of a filmmaker, you know. So, these kids, their eyes are lighting up. You are lighting my eyes up. Yeah. You know? Well, you know, every new class that I teach, I get excited about. And, and I try to bring my enthusiasm and make that contagious and, mm -hmm. uh, and try to get, you know, the kids excited about it. And, you know, I had kind of a neat moment last fall when we did our, our, uh, our film festival, our Wildwood Film Festival in the fall. Uh, one of the winning teams, I was talking to them after the film festival, and the one guy, Calvin Green, said, uh, this is all your fault. And I go, what do you mean this is all my fault? <laughs> and he said that when he saw my short film that I produced about 10 years ago, a little spooky film, he said he was inspired to get him and his friends together to shoot short films, and they've been doing it ever since. And then it comes full circle. They submit a film in our film festival, and we're one of the winners of the film festival. And that meant a lot to me that someone actually let me know that I reached them, that I got to them, and that he and his friends uh, make films to this day because of my influence. And, mm -hmm. and I was just telling while, my friends about your Batman film and how oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it parallels the new Batman <laughs> film. And they, they were like blown away. They're yeah, like, who is this guy, Joe Johnson? There's some uncanny <laughs> similarities there. So I, I try to bring that same enthusiasm <laughs> to our kids' camp. And uh, 
Uh, you can give us a call here at ONTV if you have a young one that's uh, graduating from fifth grade into sixth grade. And if you think they may have an interest in learning what this is all about, make sure you reach out to us here at ONTV. Uh, here's a clip from last year's kids camp to kind of give you an idea of what these kids are capable of. I love swimming in all my money. Time calculator, I think. Whoa, how does it work? Uh, I'm not entirely sure. Uh, what if we just punch random numbers into it? All right, go for it. A negative 150 million. Whoa. Uh, equal <laughs> Whoa, where, where are, are we? we? <laughs> <laughs> Close. Yeah, that was close. <sighs> okay, so we know how that works. Oh, when you going, you're crying, your mama. <laughs> yeah, are you? Well, you guys are just bullies. <laughs> well, you guys are just bullies. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, <laughs> what the? Who are who, you supposed to be? Yeah, who are you supposed to be? I'm vengeance. <laughs> ah! Do me a favor, next time you turn in your homework assignment, don't write vengeance on it. Okay, so maybe that was a bit uh, too far back. Yeah, we should probably go to like 1770 American history. Oh yeah, then we won't have to study for a social studies test. Oh, <laughs> let's go. All right. Whoa. 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 Okay, this, this doesn't seem so bad. Yeah. <laughs> okay, that was close. Oh that was my god. Very close. You put him in a trance, shaking it up and down. Shake a little here, shake a little there. You got the boys going to town on a doo doo. So there you go, June 19th through the 23rd. The fun thing about these kids is they're not intimidated by this stuff. I've had adults come in to take our classes here at ONTV and they see the lights, they see the buttons and they go, oh, I don't know if this is for me. Little kids come in and they're like, all right, what can we do with this They want to stuff? press everything, you know, they want to dive right into it. Exactly. <laughs> so the video that we just showed you, that's kind of their final project at the end of the week. Uh, we record a bunch of little sketches. They pitch ideas, I pitch ideas. We shoot it all in one day and edit it all together and then they walk out of here with a finished 
program that they can show their friends and family and it's a lot of fun and as you can see they get really really creative and and you know it's amazing the tools that we have access to a lot of the special effects that you saw in those clips are all available on YouTube there's all these green screen effects and downloads and stuff that you can bring in like dinosaurs and stuff to enhance your your project uh, and I let the kids know that this is this is at your fingertips you can access this stuff for your own projects so kind of reminds me I don't know if you've seen the movie The Fablemans with Steven Spielberg it kind of tells the story of him as a child developing a love for filmmaking hmm. uh, as he experiences you know personal turmoil within the family but um, I kind of look for that in the kids that come into ON TV. Which ones are going to be inspired? Which ones are going to continue to do this uh, maybe as a career choice? So, yeah. yeah. And it's fun when I run into these kids out in the community and they remember me and they say thanks for uh, the kids' video camp. So, mm -hmm. so give us a call. Sign up your young one today and uh, we'll have some fun in the studio. Uh, next up, we have a clip from a long-time ON TV show. Uh, unfortunately, when COVID rolled around, a lot of our programs went away for a number of years. Some of them have not returned. Some of them are slowly coming back. And one of those shows that we really missed having around here for a long time was Between Terra and Minas. Uh, mm -hmm. Ian Witherspoon uh, with Sammy and Anthony, the brothers, uh, the Terramina brothers. Uh, they're longtime friends that go back to s their school days. They get together, they talk about sports, and we were so happy when they announced that they're going to be back in the studio producing new episodes. Uh, here's a clip from Between Terraminas. Good evening, Lake Orion. Well, I'm back. I'm your host. Who cares about my other two co-hosts? I am Between Terraminas. Hi. Are you, though? Are you? I'm between Terminas. No! <laughs> I'm no, between you're not! Terminas. You want. Yes, stuff. indeed. This is Between Terminas here on ONTV. I'm your host, Anthony Termina. And I got Sam and Ian. We look so young in that. Yeah. We do. We had more of a youthful glow back then, didn't we? Yes, we did. Yes, yeah. we did. Well, being Lions fans for the last 12 years, that will take it out of you. Hey! I, hey, the Lions are a part of my empire. What? Well, that's news to me. That's news to they me. They aren't part of my empire. It's the Vikings, Ravens. Bengals, Cowboys are part of the empire. You call it an empire. Wait, but it's the more Lions of a are not wagon. part of your empire. Don't give me that. The Lions are not part of my empire. Oh, they're not. Okay, they're not then, part you of need, my then you need to owe viewers an apology. What do you mean? I don't you know. I don't know. Yeah, you openly said that they were part oh, of your I empire. Take that back. It's then all apologies to the viewers right now. It's do it on air. No, no. Do it on air. Okay, I apologize. Lions aren't part of the empire. Don't we have it hard enough? We don't need you as a fan, too. There is a Sammy curse. Bob Bridges says there's a Sammy curse. There's no curse! When did you start becoming a Stars fan? I've been a Stars fan since 1990, 1993. That is a lie. <laughs> no. Hey, they weren't even no. around then. Weren't we're they Minnesota? still the North Stars? Yeah. Yeah, yeah we're in Minnesota. 93. You were a Wings fan till what, no, 03? Not. No. You watch your mouth. <laughs> All right. What are we talking about? Lions. Lions? Ant? We can go Lions. Uh, is that all you... right, Mr. Host? Yes, John Bud Lions. All right, we'll pose a question. Okay, so what was your take on the draft? Top five. I think Lions did well. I mean, people are going to say, well, what the heck they're doing first round and, like, drafting a running back. And then, you know, I know people like Pat Caputo, who's been on our, uh, been on our show. He um, has an open invite. He has an open invite here. I would love to debate Pat Caputo on this. Um, but... I think that the Lions did okay. I mean, like, you know, you look at, of course, the Andrew Swift trade ended up working out. Um, I think they've addressed the running game issue. I love the I love the branch pick at 45. Um, Henderson Hooker is going to be your backup to him, Jared Goff, maybe two, three years down the road. 
Um, who knows? I mean, he's com still coming off a coming off surgery. I don't like the lineman pick that they made. Um, I think it's a little bit of reach. Linebacker pick Paris can I mean, like Campbell um, Jack. and Jack Campbell was a linebacker. Uh, Linebacker. I like the linebacker pick. I like Campbell there. I don't like the little Porter pick. I think they should have went with Michael Mayer, uh, Notre Dame tight end. Um, but other than that, I thought the Lions top five. Top five. I think definitely for sure. I still think. I still think Philadelphia, Pittsburgh, um, Green Bay. Oh, I'd better draft in the Lions. So it's great having those guys back here in the studio, and you too can produce your own show like Between Terramitas if you go through our video production workshop here at ON TV. Give us a call, 248 393 1060. Uh, class fee is $55 per person for a total of 10 weeks. Uh, that covers our portable cameras, our studio, and an overview of Adobe Premiere Pro. So if you want to produce your own program, uh, give us a call. Uh, things are winding down here. We want to sort of close out with a calendar of events to see what's happening here in the studio, or in the studio, in this community over the next several weeks. So uh, Tessa, what's going on in uh, Lake Orion uh, in the next few weeks? On Thursday, May 11th, Orion Township Parks and Recreation will be hosting their first Motherhood Matters Health and Wellness Expo. Come enjoy a night at the Orion Center and discuss hot topics, including car seat safety, choking, safe sleep, breastfeeding, and postpartum care. After the discussion, enjoy a chair massage, receive information from vendors, and free food. The expo runs from 5.30 p.m. to 7.30 p.m., and child care will be provided for ages 2 and up. On Saturday, May 13th, Postal customers are being asked to participate in the Stamp Out Hunger Food Drive. To donate, leave non-perishable food items next to your mailbox prior to delivery on Saturday, and letter carriers will collect the food and take them to stock local food banks. Keep your dog and cat happy and healthy by attending Oakland County's Pet Wellness Clinic on Saturday, May 13th. No appointments are needed to get your pets vaccinated, obtain preventative care, receive microchipping, or purchase a dog license. For pet safety, bring dogs on a short leash with a snug collar and cats in a carrier. For pet vaccination questions, call 586-879-1745. Or for general event information, call 248-858-7759. The clinic will be held at Orion Oaks Dog Park, located at 2301 West Clarkson Road in Lake Orion. The Oakland County Farmers Market is hosting a Spring Flower Day series starting on Sunday, May 14th. Shop for flowers and plants such as annuals, perennials, flats, hanging baskets, and vegetable starters, and other related gardening items. The Oakland County Farmers Market is located at 2350 Pontiac Lake Road in Waterford, and is open from 8 a.m. to 2 p.m. Now let's take a look at this weekend's weather. Friday will be nice and warm with a high of 81 degrees and the sky will be partly cloudy. Enjoy that sunshine while you can because moving on to Saturday, the temperatures will start to dip a bit with a high of 72 and there will be cloudy skies. Sunday will drop even more with a high of 62 with some more cloudy weather. That's it for this week's ONTV Quick Hit. Thanks for tuning in and we'll see you next time. So as you can see, lots going on in the community. There's a couple of other fun events that are a few weeks away. The uh, Art Center's Art and Flower Fair is going to be happening in downtown Lake Orion in a few weeks. And uh, we're going to try something new we've never done before. We're going to do a, a podcast from the Flower Fair. We're going to take our equipment down there, set up under a tent, weather permitting, and uh, if possible, go live from the Flower Fair and call people over to sit down and chat with us. So. If you see ONTV at the Flower Fair in a few weeks, come by and say hi. Uh, just up the road at Canterbury Village, their dino stroll is returning. They have those big, giant animatronic dinosaurs. Have you ever seen those? Have you been there? I've seen something like that, yeah. You mean the blow-up things? Were they, no, the they're animatronic. They they roar and they move. And uh, well, little that'll kids be great, think yeah. they're at the zoo. They, they're so <laughs> realistic and lifelike. Um, they, uh, Canterbury Village actually owns those dinosaurs and they travel all over the country and they're going to be returning here to Lake Orion in a couple of weeks. And 
Speaking Good, of be very uh, fun. what's that? It'll be very fun. Yeah. yeah. Speaking of Canterbury Village, I just found out uh, yesterday, I think it was, that Stan Aldrich, who created uh, Canterbury Village and Indianwood Golf Course on the north end of town, he just passed away on May 5th, I believe it was. His son Keith is currently the owner of Canterbury Village in Indianwood, uh, but we wanted to make sure we expressed our condolences to Keith and his family on the passing of uh, Stan Aldrich. He, uh, he made Canterbury Village and Indianwood Golf Course what it is today, a, a, a destination for people to come from all over to see Lake Orion. Well, so. it's like what Chuck was saying with, with the VFW, you know, history won't be forgotten as long yeah. as we celebrate it. Yeah, yeah, he definitely left a legacy behind. Yeah. Uh, so with that, we're going to wrap up this edition of Orion Today. Marco, thanks for coming by again. Thanks for having me. And we'll see you again soon. Thanks for watching, and good night. Bye.